So I'm going to give you a little background on who I am and what I do. My name is Dr. Darren Schmidt. I'm a chiropractor. I focus on nutrition. This is my office. And since uh, 1998, I've been working with nutrition and getting people better. And energy comes up, pain goes away, sleep gets better, digestive troubles go away. But about four years ago, I was walking down the hallway, and, uh, I, and I was feeling good. And I sat down at my desk, and five minutes later, I felt tired. And I stopped and I thought, okay, what's different here versus five minutes ago in the hallway? And I looked around and I was sitting in front of two computers. I have the desktop and the laptop going. So using our testing techniques, I discovered that both of those computers are causing harm to my body. And this happens with most people, to, to be honest, who are on computers. So the electromagnetic frequencies coming off the screen, coming off the tower, coming off the cord and mix that in with the cell phone and the printer and the uh, clock radio or plugged in um, calculator and you have the sea of electromagnetic magnetic and radio frequencies at your desk. And that was about four years ago and I realized well I don't spend that much time in front of a computer but I have patients that spend eight hours in front of a computer so they must be better or like worse off than I am. So I started using our testing procedures and sure enough I found that uh, people who spend more than four hours a day in front of the computer are tired because of it. Their brain gets tired, their eyes get tired. It uh, takes energy out of the body. So for about three years, I looked for supplements that would fix it. And there is none. There's no supplements that fix um, hypersensitivity to EMFs and radio frequencies reg regarding the frequencies themselves. Um, now, I found supplements that would work for about three months, maybe, but then the problem would come back. And so I started work, looking into like devices and there's stickers and there's various... We'll talk about that stuff later. Um, but what I did discover is that there are underlying conditions that can be addressed over the course of six months to a year. And I'm specifically talking about heavy metal toxicity. So if you have fillings in your teeth or you have heavy metals stuck in your body, those metals in your organs, like mercury, aluminum, you know, antiperspirants are made out of aluminum. That aluminum sits in your skin and it acts like an antenna and it attracts EMS to your body and then those EMS cause harm to your body. And these are what these upcoming slides are, are going to show you. Various people who have had negative effects from electromagnetic frequencies and radio frequencies. So this is a wavelength so I just talked about how an electron could be a particle and a wavelength. It'll, it'll be its energy and matter. So here's a wavelength and it goes up and down and up and down. And this is, um, this is electricity right here. Now our bodies have different wavelengths according to the organ and this has been measured by different people and they're not too far off from each other. So it says the thymus gland which is located right here has a wavelength of, well, 65 to 68 megahertz. The heart is 67 to 70, the lungs 58 to 65. So every organ has its own wavelength. And that can be disrupted by other items in our world. So here we have cell phones. This is the electromagnetic spectrum. We have low frequencies, like the earth is a low frequency. Um, home appliances, the electrical outlets in your house, that, that's a low frequency. And that what that means is 0 to 300 hertz. Then we have radio waves. And what I want to point out here is we have AM, FM, television. Then we have microwaves. That includes Wi-Fi and then microwaves for cooking. Right in between, we have cell phones right here. Okay, then we have infrared like heating lamps and lasers. X-rays are up here. Cosmic and gamma rays are over here. So for many years, we've known that nuclear radiation is dangerous. We've also known that low frequency magnetic waves are dangerous. But for decades we were told that all of this is safe. And especially like in this area, the radio waves, AM, FM, cell phones, we've been told this is safe, but it's not. So I'm gonna, I'll get into that in a second here. So these are radio frequencies right here. This, this is the, the density of radio frequencies, radio waves. And here we have zero point, point zero, 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 there's ten zeros here and then a one. This is almost zero radio frequencies, the, the density of it. And at this level, we have EEG altered. That means that people were strapped into an electro, electroencephalogram, 
measuring their wavelengths of their brain, and they were giving a, given a little bit of radio frequency, and it altered their brain waves. Okay, and then coming up here, we have 0.001, that'd be the density of radio frequencies. And here we have sleep disorders, weakness, fatigue, pain. And just coming up the scale, up to one, we have uh, people can feel it here at 0 0.01, decreased cell growth, childhood leukemia, impaired motor function, reaction time memory, attention, altered white blood cells in school children, headache, dizziness, fatigue, weakness, insomnia, you know, so there's, the, the point here is there's no safe levels of radio frequencies. And researchers have been looking for decades and they have not, find a, they have not found a safe level for radio frequencies. Here we have a graph showing our exposure to radio frequencies, and this is since the year 2000, and it goes up like this. So we're, so the actual the exposure is like 20,000 times greater than what it was in 1980. All right, now this is electricity, but it's dirty, and this is a technical term. And what this is, you saw the other graph, which it's, it's a nice smooth up and down, up and down. Well, here we have the up and down, but writing on it are um, other wavelengths that come from kitchen appliances or cell phones or Wi-Fi or something like that. So, th so the electricity in your home, like I mentioned before, it's a low frequency, it's 60 hertz, which is actually a very, very big wavelength. But you have these little tiny wavelengths that run on it. Now there's a book called Dirty Electricity, and in that book, Samuel Milham, he's an epidemiologist, he says that the number one cause of cancer in the United States is dirty electricity, and it's been that way for many decades. All right, this is a cell phone call right here. Now the, uh, this, the nice smooth up and down that I showed you earlier, that's relatively safe, it still causes problems, but when you have this digital pulse thrown in there, this is very, very damaging, much more damaging. So here we have standby, and then it jumps up ringing, and then it drops down, then it jumps up speaking and listening, and it's going up and down like this. Your body cannot adapt to this. It does have the potential to adapt to a nice, smooth, up and down AM wavelength or FM wavelength. All right, so there's, that's some fundamental stuff about, that's just basic. All right, so what this says is, I managed to have smart meter installation delayed at my house, but suddenly became sick overnight with palpitations, chest pain, insomnia, dizziness, inability to concentrate, and memory loss and fainting spells. After becoming sick, I found out that the day I became suddenly sick was the day the smart meter rollout was completed in my area, and the smart meters were remotely turned on from base. So his house was not even installed. This is his neighbor's houses. I can no longer drive. I can't work. I'm a doctor. I have to go and sleep at my mother-in-law's place. There are no smart meters there yet or at her, in her neighborhood or at her house. So there's a billion stories like this. Not a billion, but there's, there's going to be thousands. There's definitely in the hundreds because smart meters are being deployed right now. So people can read this and say, well, that guy must be lying or he's crazy or he's insane. You know, you've heard it all before. But when you have hundreds and thousands of people saying the same stuff over and over again, those people are not crazy or insane. They're actually feeling it. All right. Now, so I'm, what I'm going to talk about are different tests that can be done. And here's an example. And it, it doesn't really tell us, like, in real time what's happening. But this is electrical current affecting cortisol levels in cows. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So minutes of exposure. So here we have 18 minutes of exposure at 8 milliamps. And this cow had this much, or these cows had this much cortisol. At four milliamps, they had this much cortisol. And at no milliamps, they had this much cortisol. So what that means is the more exposure they had over time, the more cortisol that the cow produced. All right, now, if you took a cortisol test on every single American, there might be 25 or 50 percent or some high number because we're just stressed, regardless of electricity or cell phone usage. So this isn't, doesn't really give us too much of a story. But I do have a test, and I've been using this since 2004, and I've adapted it to uh, show us how we're affected by electromagnetic and radio frequencies. So what happens is you put a strap around the chest like this. You may have seen some people running down the road with no shirt, but they got this black strap around their chest like that. That strap then sends a signal to their watch, and they know what their pulse is. Now the computer test that I have 
sends a signal to the computer and it does way more math and way more magical things with the heart rate other than just giving a pulse. So what this is, <clears throat> this shows the body's ability to repair at night. This is rest and repair. And this is fight or flight. Okay. So um, this woman was laying on her bed, very relaxed. And then what we did, we had a cordless phone. We had the base here and the phone set was here. And we called it. And this is what happened. See that? That's her nervous system. Her nervous system is freaking out. And it goes like that. And it goes like this all the way through. So I'm going to backtrack just to show you again how smooth that is. And it's per this is perfect. This is a beautiful test. And then you turn on the, cell phone, or the uh, cordless phone and this is what happened. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next one. Um, this is a, a kid with diabetes. And... Uh, this is over the course of a year, these three tests right here. And the name of the test is called A1C, and it measures diabetes over a period of a long, like long period of time. And uh, it's below normal. That's 7.5. So he's doing good here, here, and here. And then a smart meter was installed. And then his next test, that's what happened. It, it almost hit 10, which is really, really high and really dangerous and really bad. Then they got their smart meter taken out. And then next test, and it measured right there. So he had it under control, introduced a smart meter to the outside of the house. You know what a smart meter is, right? Okay, good. All right, here's someone else. This is a woman, and she was doing the hot yoga, the Bikram yoga. And one of her friends said, my blood pressure has been coming down since I've been doing Bikram yoga. So this woman decided to take her blood pressure every day to see what would happen, because she was doing the yoga every day. So she was very consistent about it, and this is her blood test. And then suddenly one afternoon she felt completely exhausted and her blood pressure spiked right here and right here. See that? Her smart meter was installed earlier that day. And then her blood pressure stayed up like this, like that. So this is over the course of two weeks. And we're just lucky enough that she happened to be doing this. All right, so there's some hardcore physical evidence. Here's a woman with cancer. There's a blood marker called CA125. The normal range is between 0 and 31. Here she's doing alternative treatments for cancer. She had already been through cancer a couple times. She did conventional and alternative. But she found a really good procedure. And here's her CA125 scores dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. This is normal. Her cancer is gone at this test. It's below 31. Two or three weeks later, she got her smart meter installed. And you can see what happens with her CA-125. It jumps up to 700. And then she, she, her MD put her on a new um, chemo drug, but then she died by December. She, just, she died here. Her cancer had metastasized the adrenal, bowel, lung, kidney, spleen. But look, in March of 2012, she had no cancer. In de December 2012, she was dead. And that's when her smart meter was installed right there. All right, those were, those were, that was data that I had collected. This is something I got off the internet. This is the percentage of offspring remaining asthma-free. And these kids were in the womb, and it says right here, estimates of asthma risk by maternal magnetic field exposure during pregnancy. So the more magnetic field the kid was exposed to in the womb, the more asthma they had. There's the most amount of asthma. Here's and also the most amount of magnetic field exposure. The least amount of asthma, least amount of magnetic field exposure. So, I've, so here I've talked to you about diabetes, asthma, cancer, blood pressure. So these are problems caused by, caused by electromagnetic fields and radio frequencies. Okay, this is a, a, a researcher named Magda Havis, and it's the same machine that I have. And here's a person with that strap on around the chest. Here is, this is deck. That means the cordless phone. This person is not sensitive to the cordless phone. It's on here, and there's no change between here, here, and here. Here's a person who is sensitive. And the cordless phone is here, and you can see it doubles the heart rate. Can you see all right? All right, good. Then they turn it off, then they turn it on, and again, it doubles the heart rate. 
So there are people who are sensitive. It's a smaller percentage of the country, like up to 3% are very sensitive, and up to 35% are sensitive, but they don't know it, and they're having physical symptoms from it. All right, now this is something I did with a, a woman. She's sitting in her living room. She's got that test on her chest like this, and every blue line that goes up, that's the time between heartbeats. Let me backtrack a little bit. See, every blue line that goes up is the time between heartbeats. So the average here is 122 beats per minute. And you're looking at this woman, her average is like 0.75 beats per minute. Um, or, or I'm sorry, one beat every 0.75 um, seconds. Okay, so it's not bad. And then what we did is we turned on her cell phone. I called it from my phone. She answered it. And she held it against her heart. And this is what happened. See that? Now, she had a problem with the electrical wiring in her house for five years. And she was sick and tired all the time. And she refused to use the microwave oven. And what had happened was a friend of a friend had installed the microwave oven. And he um, messed up the uh, switchboard. And he ungrounded the house. And her, her house was an EMF mess. So she fixed that, plus we used some of the products that we have. And then this is what happened two months later. We did the same exact te test, no cell phone. Then we turned the cell phone on, and she only had this. She was doing much, much better. This is two months later. All right, now we're going to get back to this one. This is, um, this is a function of the nervous system. This is actually me. All right, and I did this Monday night. And this is my normal. I'm sitting in my house. I have no smart meter in my house although my neighbors have smart meters. I have no Wi-Fi, no microwave. It's a clean space, no dirty electricity. It's a clean space. Then I went to my neighbor's house and I stood by a smart meter. And I had my radio frequency device right here. And so I'm holding on the computer and I got this pointed at the smart meter. And this is ble uh, beeping when the smart meter goes off. Now when he first had his installed, I tested it myself. And it would beep every, it, this thing would pick up a pulse about every three minutes. Now it picks up a pulse every 10 to 20 seconds. So I could not feel the effect myself on my body. But you can see that this computer test shows the stress on my heart. So that's the smart meter. <clears throat> All right, and I didn't feel it. So the point here is that I'm sure there's probably a few hundred million Americans who once they get their smart meter, their heart's going to act like this. Their nervous system is going to act like this, but they're not going to feel it. They're, they're going to have some sort of diagnosis later on down the road. The doctor will say, oh, it's genetic, or oh, it's your personality, or you need to take a vacation. No, it's because they have EMF problems, radio frequency um, density is too high. All right, this is me again, same night. I plugged in Wi-Fi, and I stood by it. And notice that here's my, this is my uh, sympathetic... Increased sympathetic was right here. Let me show you my normal again. Sympathetic. This is my normal. Sympathetic means fight or flight. The body wants to fight, right? So turn on the Wi-Fi. My body wants to fight like that. And then the parasympathetic, I'm going to backtrack. There's my parasympathetic. That's rest and repair. Okay, with the Wi-Fi. Where is it? I don't have rest or repair. There's no rest or repair in the presence of my Wi-Fi. Okay, so, so there you go. So now we know what cell phones do to our bodies, Wi-Fi, smart meters. Um, this is a, a map of electromagnetic smog. And smart meter deployments are significantly increasing electro smog. This is Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, so imagine living right there. Now, Ann Arbor's like this, and I've taken this downtown, and I can see that this thing goes crazy once I get into downtown. My house is one mile west, and my neighborhood is actually very, very quiet. You know, my neighbor's smart meter, it is smart metered, and there is Wi-Fi in my neighborhood, but go downtown is way worse. <clears throat> this is a graph showing that smart meters are way more dangerous than microwave oven, cell phone for the whole body, like that. So just to show that Smart meters are pretty bad. Cumulative whole body exposure is two orders of magnitude higher than cell phones. Okay. This is a study done in, uh, I think it was in Spain, 
And what they did, they just surveyed people in neighborhoods and they said, how's your health? And they had all these different symptoms like hearing disruptions, visual disruptions, depression, feeling of dis discomfort, memory loss, irritability, skin problems, dizziness. And they surveyed lots and lots of people. And the bottom line is the people who live far away from cell phone towers were not doing too bad. They were over here. The people who, li who live near cell phone towers were not doing very well. They had more symptoms. They were just sicker. <clears throat> there, here's a graph showing heat from a cell phone after 15 minutes of holding it against a person's head. Okay, so it creates heat, but that's a different issue. Heat is one thing. Radio frequency is another. Electromagnetic frequency is another. And Bluetooth is another. Those are four problems from one phone. All four of those things are just listed, come from one device. All right, this is the instruction manual that comes with an iPhone. It says, keep iPhone at least 15 millimeters away from the body. You can't hold this against your head. It's dangerous. And they're telling you, Apple is telling you, it's dangerous. Then it says, maintain at least 15 millimeters separation between iPhone and the body. So don't put it in your pocket. Or don't put it here in your pocket or anywhere else like that. Here's a woman with breast cancer. She's got three tumors right there, there, there. See the coloring on her skin? Right. She carried her cell phone like this for seven years. The antenna is on the outside top. Look, look at this cell phone. The antenna goes up, over, and down. So the antenna is in perfect alignment with the three breast tumors. There, there, there. They're selling bras now with these cell phone pockets. So this is bad.